Welcome to Life as Usual, a video blog dedicated to making you a more impactful leader through the ideas of self-awareness, execution, and direction. One of the things I want to talk about today is ego. You've got to let people save face, because if you don't, they're not going to save you. Please like, subscribe, share this amongst your teams. It's frustrating to listen to somebody and you know they're wrong, especially in public, especially when you know you have the right answer. Maybe it's something we've been taught when we were in school, but there's something that just wanting to raise your hand and go, me, I got it. But in real life, what ends up happening is you start sowing the seeds of resentment. And trust me, as a leader that's trying to get something done and create an impact, resentment is one of the last things you want. What if I'm right? So what? When you step in front of somebody and tell them that they're wrong and you're right in front of other people, you're not really telling them that you're right. You're not really trying to correct them. More than likely, at least how they're going to see it, is you're doing it for social points. How do I correct somebody if I don't do it publicly? You correct somebody by not doing it publicly. The concept of saving face is essentially about letting someone feel okay so that you gain trust with them in order to correct them. So instead of telling them that publicly, what you want to do is you want to build a connection to tell them that privately. Get a cup of coffee with them. Go get a drink. Go have lunch. Anything where they're outside of the building and outside of that creative context and more into a place where they can feel more honest and safe. When they feel safe, you can tell them where they went wrong and why it affects their goals. Again, you want to connect into what they see. What happens if I don't let people save face? Well, if you don't let people save face, there's going to be a growing resentment. No one likes a grandstander. It's going to cap your development wherever you are, whether that's a startup where you're trying to influence people or at a company where you're trying to go up the ranks. A lot of people become the solitary geniuses in the corner that don't really have an impact on the work that people are doing. And as a leader and as a change maker, you want to have impact. So it doesn't matter what title you have. The minute you start grandstanding, the more you take away from that. It's a value judgment. So, how do you apply this to your life through the lens of self-awareness, execution, and direction? Self-awareness. You have to be aware that you have a need to be right. We all have a need to be right. And we also have a need to be liked. The thing about that is, in school, a lot of our identities were tied to being right. And being right, in a lot of places, meant you were liked. People like the smart person. You want to edge and show people how smart you are. Be aware that sometimes you're doing that. Sometimes that you're grandstanding. Be aware of that. Execution. Whenever somebody's wrong, instead of raising your hand or just saying, but it's actually on Tuesday, take a breath, write it down. And then, for bonus points, write down what goal are they trying to accomplish. Try to understand it from their point of view. If you do that, you'll start seeing even though people are wrong, look, they're trying to accomplish something. And maybe by correcting them, instead of making you feel better, you can help them achieve their goals. People will feel a lot better about that. Direction. You want to wait until after the meeting, and then you want to have a conversation with them. You want to build trust so that this becomes a two-way conversation. Again, the most interesting thing that happens when you let people save face is they'll save your face. And if you show them that you're thinking about them, they'll think about you. It becomes reciprocal. And then you'll have that much more emulation to be the change maker that you can be. So let's wrap this up. You want to be aware that sometimes you are grandstanding. You also want to execute by writing this stuff down. If somebody's wrong, just write it down. Breathe. It's going to be okay. We know you know the answer. But write it down. And then write down what that person's trying to achieve. And then... Get them one-on-one -on -one if you can and talk about what went wrong and how you see it from their end and how you can change their perception to match their goals. Trust me, by doing that, you won't be grandstanding. People just think you're grand.
If you found this topic of leadership interesting, take a look in the description box and you'll find a couple of books that have helped my understanding of how to become a better leader and some of the pitfalls that I've found across the way. Especially when it comes to leadership, this is not a one-way conversation. I'm not just talking to you. And this isn't just a two-way conversation. You're not just talking to me and I'm talking to you. This is actually a conversation amongst the tribe of leaders. That can't start without you injecting some opinion or idea in the comment box below. Talk about some of your own personal stories and help engage all of us into learning how to be a better leader from you. I'm not the only teacher, I'm also a student.